and kick off the Board of Health meeting for the 17th of May. Looks like we have everybody on the board here from our last meeting we'll be able to pass the minutes. But before we do that, um, if I can pose just a quick little COVID update to see how yeah. we're doing to what's new. Of course, sure. So first off, I just want to say, um, well, to everyone, but Stefan specifically, we were able, Trisha and I met with Maddie um, last week. So she did reach out following our Board of Health call to get a little bit more information. She's definitely a go-getter. I don't remember being that um, driven as a junior in high school. So um, she's amazing. I was like, you're leaving for college in September? She's like, no, I'm just a junior. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Um, but she did well. She had um, an interview on Friday pertaining to what she needed to shadow the Board of Health for. So I told her we could help her with anything else, and she might actually do a little internship for um, the summer here and help out as needed. So thank That's you for great. introducing um, yeah, my sure. and trust to her. So great. And then as for the COVID update, we are seeing, you'll see in our spreadsheet, a little bit of an uptick in the numbers. Um, it's definitely not specific just to Walpole or specific to Massachusetts. Uh, that being said, we are seeing vaccinations rates and boosters going up. Trish is definitely busy on her Tuesday and Thursday clinics. In addition to that, um, we have our MAVEN communicable disease surveillance system, which is what we track our COVID cases in, um, and something that the school nurses helped out with, and we had some contact tracing help. So we do have that shared service grant with our Norfolk County 8 group, which we continued with, and we do have um, individuals that will assist with contact tracing if, in fact, Trish is, like, overburdened or the numbers do continue to rise, which hopefully they do not. It's great. I know it's definitely not just our town. We're dealing with work still. And uh, every Monday we're taking a look to see the chart and the community impact. And we'll see that start to stabilize a bit. Could I speak about COVID for a minute? Um, the where I, I know in the school system that kids are not, no longer required to wear masks. However, um, I know I work at a child care center and COVID continues to be an issue, but people do not wear masks. So many of the staff do. The classroom that I am in, um, a couple of the children choose to wear masks. And so therefore I also wear a mask in solidarity with them. And I, and I think I should, but um, this is not other children. Their parents say they do not need to. It's not a requirement. And I'm concerned about that. Is, will there any chance of them re-requiring re people, children in schools to be wearing masks? So right now you are correct, it's mask optional. So who licenses daycare is the EEC and then who uh, licenses the, um, the K through 12 schools is DESE. So ultimately they're allowed to make rulings. I don't necessarily know if that will take place. Mm -hmm. um, I know obviously they have um, asked but I don't necessarily know if anything in the future will take place. That being said, you know, anyone that's wanting to wear a mask is definitely encouraged to do so, obviously, to protect themselves. And then the main take home is those that don't feel well um, or, you know, begin to not feel well during a school day should obviously remove themselves from the situation and test as necessary. Um, and I think that's the more normal practice you're going to see. I don't necessarily know if they will reinstate mask mandates. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, it seems that people are more immune now to the COVID thing. They treat it as just a flu or a cold. So, you know, that's probably why they, um, it's not being careless. It's just like, you know, we'll take it as it comes. But again, yeah, it should, it should be optional. I mean, if, if I'm some places I'm concerned because the space is not too big. So I wear my mask, other spaces, you know, you know, I don't wear my mask. One thing that concerns me is my friend, Kathy Garvin, who's the head, head school nurse. She is down with COVID again for the second really? time. And where would she have gotten it? But within the school population, those are the people with whom she deals. And she also has a mother who is, whose health is very compromised as well as her father. And, um, and as the only local child frequently visits them in Salem, New Hampshire. So I don't know. If I were Kathy, I'd, I don't know. It, I, mean, I just schools, where so, else would she have gotten it? But at school, yeah, she actually yeah. had an exposure outside of school. Where are she, you sure about that? Yes, 
And that's where she thinks she picked it up. Kathy is actually really good. She wears her mask all the time. And I would say probably about 90% of the staff at Walpole High School still continue to mask. And good. honestly, I would say it's anywhere from 50 to 60% of the kids still do. Oh, that's the high good. That is good to hear. That's all I can speak to is the right. high school. Team. That's um, good to hear. They really... I, I'm rather impressed at how well the kids have been, you know, with wearing the masks, masks, keeping their distance, um, going home if they're sick, not coming in if they're sick, still doing really good hand hygiene. They really have been doing a great job, in my well, opinion, on well, that. Thank you. I, I, I was concerned about that and had no way of getting that knowledge. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I very much appreciate that. Uh, anything else COVID related before we scoot on down the agenda? No, I don't think so. Thank you so much. All right, next uh, 7.30 approval of minutes from the May 3rd meeting. Has anybody had any comments, corrections? Yeah, I, ac I actually do. Uh, under the motion for the planning board request for comment or with road extension, um, it says, made by motion made by Mona Vasani that the Board of Health approves the plan. I don't think I said I approved the plan. I said I had no concerns at the present time, but I don't even think it's up to us to approve or deny the plan, right? <laughs> yes, we will make that change. Thank you. Catch anything else to edit or comments on? In that case, we'll make a, anybody want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion in regards to the minutes from the May 3rd, 2022 meeting, Board of Health meeting. The Board of Health um, approves the minutes as amended. And I'll second that motion. Great, motion has been made and seconded. Any other comments? The vote, uh, Carol? Aye. Uh, Stefan? Aye. Mona? Aye. I also, the minutes approved for zero, zero. Next on our agenda is animal permit for 39 Pine Street. And do we happen to have um, Hoskins on the line for this yes. permit? Hi, hello. You. From the notes I see that, that um, this is sent out, that the um, site's been inspected and approved by the inspector. All the abutters have been notified. The permit's been, I imagine, as part of that's been applied, has been submitted. And I see there was a manure management plan that was included. Um, well, I, I guess we can ask you um, what what uh, prompted you guys for the for the permit and um, what your what your intents are. Um, I guess it's just been an interest of ours for a few years to expand our, um, you know, homestead, if you will. We've been working outside in our garden a lot and, um, you know, what better way to help with that with the bugs and the ticks and the, you know, we do compost food. So that's part of our management plan. Um, but really, you know, we do eat a lot of eggs too. So that's really um, kind of where that's coming from too. So. Good. Any questions for the board? No, it's just like notice that on the application they don't specify chicken on the right. It just says manure, a uh, poultry, poultry. Okay. So, uh, do we know how many birds we're gonna have on site? Uh, the six. Should, yeah, okay. it should be the six on the six or fewer category. Six or fewer. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I found the. The paperwork that we received was very lacking. I had to thoroughly read it and found, finally found the word poultry. Because as, you know, as the, mentioned, it was not, Mona mentioned there was no mention of how many chickens are. There is a. So it is on the online application. The form there is a bit ambiguous. It says how many of uh, each I, do you currently have? And currently we have none uh, pending, you know, the approval of of this application. So we put none there uh, as we don't have any right now. So I don't know if that's just on the form there or if there's a paper form that's more that 
clear about that. So I apologize for any confusion that may have had, but it was uh, it was it was a function of that that element of the form itself. And the other thing I wondered was, don't we usually have an inspection of the site by the animal control uh, um, person? And, and that's not indicated in the paperwork that I received. So, so in the body of the email, it does note that the um, an animal inspector was out and, and did approve the site. And the thing is now we, we're not doing paper applications. So everything is online now. So that's um, what they were alluding to was the online application, which is where they fill in uh, what they're going to be applying for. So why wasn't that sent to us? I didn't receive that. So it's an online portal where they actually have to type in into word boxes. So the attachment would be the manure management plan. The actual permit itself um, is, is- But what I'm referring to is the materials that I, we, I received. I didn't receive anything and anything. I didn't receive it that. I only received this piece of paper that calls it the man, manure management plan. That's what I received. Oh, it's in the email that Melissa sent, Carol. In the text, it's not an attachment. Right. Right. So I guess I'll, have, I'll go back to that then. Yeah, and that's that's a great point, actually. Yeah, what I can do, um, what we should probably do when we have the animal permits going forward, since it is electronic, is maybe we'll it's part of the introduction is we'll we'll reiterate what um, animals are being applied for, the numbers, um, and whether this is a you know brand new approval. Um, I, I I had the same questions. I, I recently, well, last year, I, I got a chicken permit, and the same thing. So some of the wording it doesn't allude to the fact of being renewal versus a, a initial application. So, so I hear you on that piece. Um, but yeah, we can do this part of that. I think that's because we're moving electronic. It doesn't necessarily spell out the manure management plan, but um, we can always do as part of our introduction to find out exactly uh, what the requests are, what the request is in this point. I assumed it was uh, the chickens. So, great. Any uh, besides that? Any other? comments or, or questions for the applicants? In that case. I, I think it's wonderful that people are um, having their own chickens. It's There's nothing like a, a fresh egg. The stuff you buy at the store is nothing like a real egg. And the compost part is is great. Thank you for doing that. Sure, yeah, we, we enjoy it actually. Yeah, we have a very fair size garden, so it helps with that a lot. Great. And yeah, just uh, watch out for the hawks. We have a pair yes. of hawks that are uh, that are always flying around and yes. so, part of the cycle. <laughs> All right, if that's, if there's no other questions for uh, the applicants, I'll entertain a motion. You want to make a motion? I'll make a motion regarding the animal permit at night at 39 Pine Street. The Board of Health has no concerns and congratulates the owners. I'll second that. Great. Motion has been made and seconded. Any other discussions or comments, questions? Then we will vote. Carol. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Mona. Aye. And I also, congratulations, thanks so much. You guys have been granted the permit for six chickens. Please enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good luck. All right, have a good evening. You too, bye now. Great, all right, now the fun part was over. Now we have regular regular meeting minute information. Huh? All right, life card variances. Next on our list, 740, we have two Redwood Mews. Condo Association, which we have seen in the past. Any questions or discussions for this? So I know the board will either approve or deny the variance, um, but ultimately the permit uh, won't be some, won't be um, issued until an on-site inspection is conducted at the pool as well. I know in the past we've never had any problems with um, the this swimming pool and. Um, it is mainly used by adults, and I, I would have no, would certainly support it. Okay. Any uh, any issues? Anything since from our last permit? Anything been um, any kind of uh, 
any uh, notifications or any complaints, anything like that? No, we, we haven't received any um, issues, no neglect or anything like that with this permit holder. Do, you hear? Do, we, have, do we have all the same language between all the variances? So like, it's like slightly different, um, for the most part the same. I know um, with the, um, the hotel pools, which you're going to see one more um, today that was just added on today, we talk about a CPR certified staff member. So a little bit different language. Um, some of it's the same though. The signage is always the same. Uh, pending a pool inspection is the same. And then obviously making sure that they fill out that indemnification agreement is the same. Okay. Does it make sense to align on a standard language for some of these, or do you think it would be, I guess they're different applications, but they're, they're somewhat different for the pure fact that some, if they don't require a lifeguard, we do require um, a certified pool operator be on site at all times. So that's the case for the two hotels and also the case for LA fitness, um, Redwood news. We've never required that. And again, it is a lock and key, um, pool and it is an adult, mm -hmm. uh, condominium association. That's good. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Any, we want to make a motion regarding the Redwood Muse. I can make a motion um, in regards to the variance, uh, lifeguard variance request uh, for Redwood Muse Condominium Association. Um, the board as it approves uh, the the variance. Yeah. Okay. I'll second that. Do we want to add any of the, the wording? Yeah, that, I'm sorry. Yeah, the board has no concerns based on previous applications and all this language and good performance. We, we want to specify that we didn't have issues in the in the past and and then um, that they they would. And I know like, um, like you know, that the indemnifications um, agreements are these like, um, do they expire with the variance? Do they need to, you know, submit it? Every so, yes. Year? So each year um, they do have to submit the variance request through the board and it has to be approved. And then they do have to resubmit the indemnification agreement. So we need to specify this in the Correct. motion. So we'll add that to the motion, Stefan, please. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. My dog was just <laughs> being like crazy. All right. So motions were made, seconded, and amended with uh, adding the terminology about the indemnification and the um, you know, obviously stand, uh, having to still pass the inspection. Any other comments? Then we will make a motion. Uh, no, we've already made the motion. How about we just vote on it? Carol? <laughs> Aye. Stefan. Aye. Mona. Aye. And I also, 400, the motion and the motion have both been passed. <laughs> All right. The next one is, next pool is the Fairfield Marriott. That one has slightly different setup. We have in our so a slightly different language. So this one we received earlier this morning, and I felt that given the timeline, um, we could have held it until the November, I mean, the November, the June 7th meeting, but then I feel like technically they'd have to shut their pool down for a week because their permit's only good until the 31st. So I did check with the town clerk and she said, as long as our meeting met the meeting law, which we posted 48 hours prior, we were able to update and revise the agenda to accommodate this. And the individual who submitted this application was very grateful for us doing this. So it is a repeat um, variance request. They have not had any issues in the previous years regarding this variance request. This is slightly different. The email that I sent out does bullet point what the previous motion included. CPO on site at all times, warning signs posted around the pool, children under the age of 16 shall not use the pool without adult supervision. Guests must check in at the front desk if utilizing the pool because they do get actually a key card to enter the pool. And at the time of last year's um, variance request hearing, the Board of Health recommended that at least one AED is available in the pool area and that the staff is trained to administer first aid and, and that they're CPR certified. And then in addition to that, the standard indemnification form would be required. 
and that it does note that the variance does expire at the end of the pool season, May 31st. And, and everything would be pending on an actual in, on-site inspection and passing that inspection. Any, is there any objection or any reason why we couldn't say on that third to last bullet, the Board of Health requires that at least one AED? available in the pool area and then staff is trained? I think we can. I think like the pool code doesn't specify that it's a requirement, but I think the board can obviously be more strict. And I believe it's my understanding that they do have one on site. So that would not be an issue. Okay. They do yeah. have one on site. Any uh, further discussions or questions about this? I think that's wonderful that they have the AEP in the pool area. Are there, are there any other hotels that we've provided variances to? Not quite this year. We do have one other hotel that we should be receiving a variance request unless they go the lifeguard route and that's the home to suites. And that would be a mirror image of this requirement here. Um, so again, once they do submit to the town, which the earliest they would be able to get on agenda is June 7th, we could make that uh, changes to recommends to requires. And do you know if that one has an AED or not? I believe they do. I can confirm that, but I believe both of them are equipped with AEDs. Okay. Just thinking about any surprises or impacts for them sure. if, if we mm -hmm. change that. If there's no other comments, um, maybe we want to make a motion. Yeah, I can make a motion in regards to the pool variance. Um, um, in regards to Fairfield. Um, in um, the Board of Health votes to continue the current lifeguard variance with the same conditions previously approved and um, just mentioned by Melissa, um, based again on previous applications and good performance. Um, should I relist all the uh, conditions, CPO on site all the time during open pool hours, warning signs uh, should be posted around the pool that there is no lifeguard on duty, um, children under the age of 16 shall not use the pool without adult supervision and guests using the pool should check in at the front desk prior to entering the pool area. The Board of Health also recommends that at least one AED is available in the pool area and that staff is trained to administer first aid and that staff is CPR certified as well. Um, and also this variance will expire um, the end of this pool season, right? May 31st, should we say May 31st, 2023 for this one? Correct. And then the, just the indemnification agreement and submitted to the town. Exactly. And then that um, the agreement to indemnify and hold um, the members um, of the Board of Health and the town of Walpole, um, you know, hold them, um, you know, for off the cleans for any incident or accident in the pool area. Did you, did you want to change that one bullet to, from recommends to required this time? Or are we waiting for the future for that? The indemnification, I would. Or the board for the AED. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, Stefan. Um, and then one comment to that is if we require an AED, my recommendation is to specify that we, they need to have someone there that is trained to use the AED. Because we say first aid, CPR, and yeah. usually there is a separate training specific for AEDs. For the AED, yes. Usually it's part of the first aid, but yes, that's a good point. We should specify that they're trained in using the AED, correct? Thank you. Can I interject one thing? The other thing that I've seen in my practice is making sure that the AED is in working condition, that someone checks it and nothing has expired, i.e. the pads. And that's something that is very easily added. They just need a, you know, a check mark, a monthly monitoring just so you don't show up and you have something that's not usable that's a good point. hopefully hopefully it won't be used for a long time correct 
We it's a very good point. Like I think the, board of health, the Board of Health recommends that at least one AED is available and inspected as appropriate in the pool area. Sounds good. Sounds good. Staff is trained to administer first aid, the administer first aid, CP, uh, CPR certifi certifi certified, and trained in the AEDs. Okay. Makes a long bullet there. Right, so the motion has been made. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Motion has been made and seconded. Do we have any other discussions? We will vote. Carol? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Mona? Aye. And also, the motion has been passed. The variance is passed um, as amended with the wording. Right, and then next on our list, Zoning Board of Appeals, first for 40B permit for Darwin Lane. And this looks so this like is for a 40B application. Um, the two 40B applications are somewhat similar, so not to be confusing either of them. So I'm going to just share my screen, actually, so then that way you can see... Um, Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So this is for um, the construction of 28 non-aid restricted townhouses within six buildings um, located on Darwin Lane. The proposed development um, is about approximately 3.44 acres of land. 25% because of it being a 40B will be affordable at no more than 80% of the area medi medium income and will be counted towards the town 10% affordable housing requirement. The project will be on town sewer as well as town water. And the proposed plan does show existing sidewalks on Darwin Lane. However, we, the health department would recommend the construction of sidewalks throughout the proposed development, including adequate lighting, and then also we would re recommend bike racks be included to promote a healthy lifestyle, as well as our standard motion on the dumpsters being enclosed and making sure they're adequate for the usage, as well as providing recycling um, to be in accordance with the mass um, waste band. I can kind of, I'm assuming that's what it is on the top of the, uh the drawing there but is that that's for emergency vehicles or has it been assessed to uh determine if there's enough or so adequate typically that's what they show so sometimes they'll show an actual cul-de-sac and then they'll try to get a variance request so then they don't actually have to do the full cul-de-sac but obviously mm -hmm. it's determined by sizing and if they the the radius can accommodate the largest vehicle for emergency response mm -hmm. pretty tight <laughs> the uh i agree with the sidewalks for sure there's no sidewalks there's no concerns with the wet plans or anything right melissa correct no. not in this area okay good where is darwin lane so it's off of common street let me oh. see if i can it's right past washington uh -huh. on your right as you're heading uh towards route one all right. Okay. I don't know if everyone can see. So you have Common yeah. Street in Washington. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. I never noticed there was a land there. Yeah, it's out in the back. So there's the houses and looks like there's the ho current houses like number three and number 28. There's a gap between and that's what they're going to use for that road to get access to this. So it's basically the end of the Darwin Lane cul-de-sac. They're just going to use that plot to, as, the, as the entryway. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's going to really help affect our school our school system so 
So our pieces of this are going to be more of the uh, proper trash management and the sidewalks and lighting for a healthy lifestyle, but there's no wetlands. There's no other, no other comments we have, we could have on this, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. At this time, those would be the comments we would have. Wouldn't that be a, a bus stop? What was it? Sorry, Brenda. Wouldn't this be something that we have to be concerned about a bus stop or would they just walk down Darwin Lane like the younger children? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I don't know if they would, again, with the radius turn, I'm assuming they'd have to accommodate a larger vehicle, but I don't know if it would be if something where they would go into the actual development or if they would be on the outskirts of the okay. development picking up. Okay. Usually your kindergartners have to be picked up. Right. A problem to be faced. Okay. Um, any any other discussions or comments? Should we entertain a motion. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion in regards to the residents at Darwin Commons on Darwin Lane. Um, the Board of Health recommends the construction of sidewalks throughout the proposed development and that adequate lighting is provided on the street. We also recommend that bike racks would be added to the plan to promote a healthy lifestyle and um, as well as adding a gated dumpster on the plan with a separate trash and recycling container in accordance with the mass waste disposal ban. Anything else that I would need to add? That kind of covers it. Okay. Do we hear a second? I'll second that. Motions were made and seconded. Any other comments? Then we will take a vote. Carol? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Mona? Aye. Aye also. The, the approval, the motion has been passed with our conditions, 400. We have another one. This is a Pinnacle Drive. Is that Pinnacle Point or Pinnacle Drive? So this is for, again, a 40B. Um, this is, again, 28 non-age restricted condominium townhouses. And let me just share my screen. Now you should be concerned, Carol, another 28. <laughs> I know. About the schooling system. <laughs> I know. M building more schools, adding on to more schools. That's the wetland you, you drew, Melissa? Correct, that is a wetland. So there is a portion of the lot that does have wetlands on the lot. So that's something we would wanna use our standard motion um, to mitigate mosquitoes. And then similar to the previous 40B, we would want to make sure that sidewalks are throughout the development, that street lighting is provided, and that obviously um, they're adhering to the mass waste disposal ban so that they have both trash as well as recycling. And it would be required that it be a private uh, pickup by a private collection. Now is this, forgive me, is this the wetlands? Where is the property? It's not the houses that are depicted, are they? No. So. Sorry, I should be showing you. So the properties are actually going to be all in this vicinity here. So they are going all within the wetland area. Oh, okay. So it's behind those current existing houses. Correct, correct. Where in the blue line is what? This, these are all wetlands area. So it's all going to be kind of sprinkled throughout. What's the distance though? With into the wetland? It 
it's within the wetlands. It's, it's all within the wetlands. So there's some within the buffer zone and then there's some right outside of the buffer zone. Okay. It's interesting because today at school we were talking we we're talking about insects this week, and we were discussing what which was the most dangerous and less desirable insect to have, and it was agreed it was not a hornet or a wasp, but it was a mosquito. Yeah, they could be pretty annoying and dangerous. Exactly. This was a. Uh... Request for comments. This this is correct on the for a comprehensive permit for a 40B. So this is through zoning board. So we would see this again um, through conservation and then obviously through the planning board once it gets to that point. Okay. So at this point we can uh, so I'll go ahead and make any any comments or questions before we make a motion. All right, I'll, I'll make a motion regarding the 40B application from the, is this compound? No, this was a- uh, This is zoning board. Zoning, sorry. Zoning board request for comments. The Board of Health reiterates its longstanding opposition to building in the wetlands. And, um, we look forward to seeing this again so we can reiterate yet again. Well said. I don't know if the board wants to make similar to the other 40B regarding the sidewalk, street lighting, and the dumpsters. Yes. Would we, yep, we haven't even seen, is, are we going to see that again regardless or? We should be seeing it again, um, but again, this is just through the zoning board. It's similar to the last ap application. It's just the comprehensive, it's a 40B filing. Gotcha. So we will definitely be seeing this again. Okay, and then the board will also include the requirement for a proper waste and recycling uh, facilities, as well as sidewalks and lighting and bike racks to promote healthy living. Okay, I'll second that. Perfect, motion was, um, was made and seconded. Any other comments? Then we will vote. Uh, Carol. Aye. Stefan. Aye. And Mona. Aye. I also four zero zero. The comments were posted. And next on our agenda, we have next. We have fourteen twenty nine Main Street for a definitive subdivision. So this is one the board has seen in the past. Um, it's one A, so um, it's that newer. Um, commercial building with the residential up top and what they're looking to do. We saw it a few meetings back regarding the subdivision of the lot. So what they're looking to do is they're subbing, subdividing the lot to have the rear lot be able to have um, be buildable for a single family home. So how they would access it is extending Marion Street, which is again is off of uh, 1A. And if you see on this, this is where, this is 1A right here. And then they have the building right here that was built a, probably over five years ago now. And then you have Marion Street and then they'd be subdividing the lot and putting a single family home as an extension of Marion Street. Town water onsite sewage. So they, yes, yeah, so they will have to do soil testing um, the board last saw it for a definitive subdivision a year ago, so May 18th, 2021, and the board voted that there was no concerns, uh, but prior to construction, this proposed septic system must be, or septic plan rather, must be submitted to the health department for approval. So the same would, would stand here. We haven't done any soil testing, and my assumption is, is they're aligning with the subdivision allowance. So once that's allowed to be considered subdivided, then they would move forward with the application for perk testing. Any other questions from the board? No. Okay, 
Do they want to make a motion? I'll make a motion in regards to the 1429 Main Street request um, for comments from the planning board. Um, the board of We lost your audio, Mona. Anybody here, Mona? Nope. Nope. Yeah. Good at reading lips, but I can't read that. <laughs> Mona, can you hear us? Can you guys hear me? Oh, we can hear you now. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I think I got a call. That's why it's connected to. Should I repeat the motion? Please. Okay, so in regards to the 1429 Main Street definitive subdivision um, request for comments from the planning board, the Board of Health would like to reiterate the motion from the May 18th, 2021 meeting um, that we had um, no concern at this time, except that prior to construction, the proposed septic plan must be submitted to the health department for approval. Good, I'll, I'll second that. Well done, Mona. See, the first one's practice, huh? <laughs> Motions were made and seconded. Any other comments? And we'll vote. Carol? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Mona? Aye. Aye also. So comments were posted and uh, passes 400. Right. Anything else the board to? Uh, Tend to or discuss tonight. I think we. I need to thank uh, thank Melissa for the the uh, thank you note and acknowledgement for volunteering at the hazardous waste. It was a very successful day. the The weather was cold. It's hard to believe it was cold that so it wasn't very long ago, and um, we could have worn two winter coats if we had them. But um, it was amazingly smooth, and people were happy. That's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, no, it was a very successful event. We probably had close to 400 cars go through. So everything went well. Um, we have a great group of volunteers. Everyone was, you know, spaced out accordingly, was able to reach all of the residents going through to make sure they were in the right lines. So thank you. Um, I'm trying to go up. So Megan are, is now going to be full-time starting next week, our deputy health agent. So we're very excited about that. So she'll be full-time next week. So she'll be attending our board of health meetings. Um, we also have a summer intern who's a BU um, graduate student who's going to be starting next week as well. So um, we'll be doing that. I, I did reach out to Norfolk County Mosquito Control to see if potentially they'd be interested in joining our June meeting, if not maybe July. In the past, they've always said they'd, you know, step in and just kind of maybe educate the board and answer any questions you might have. So if you've never been to the Norfolk County Mosquito Control Project, it's right in Walpole, actually. Definitely something to look into. If you're ever interested, I can set up a meeting there. It's it's pretty cool to see what they do and what they provide and, and the services and, and the equipment that they have, the, the trucks, the sprayers. So it's interesting. So I thought that that would be kind of neat. Um, and then on AED note, we actually applied for um, nine AEDs for the town through town meeting and we actually got approved. So this is something that we, we kind of had on our list of things to do when Trish started back in July of 2019 and everything kind of got derailed with COVID. So we, Trish kind of assessed what we have for AEDs in the town and where we're lacking AEDs. And surprisingly, there's a lot of town buildings that don't have AEDs and there's not really a requirement. So through the state, it needs to be in schools, it needs to be in gymnasium and then medical facilities, but like a municipality, like town buildings not a requirement and kind of like what Brenda alluded to we do have one in town hall and we have one in a few other town buildings but no one's like actively maintaining them so that's something we as a health department predominantly Trish has agreed to take on so we will be ordering the nine AEDs they will be sprinkled around town so the water treatment DPW the library doesn't have any right now um, one in town hall as well as the 1A field so um it, it's kind of nice. We're excited. I think it's a good thing. And it's something that we'll keep on our radar and, and keep monitoring like Brenda had mentioned. So, so everything's good, um, but we're excited. So we'll be ordering those soon. 
They do have a 35 week lead time. So we will see them, but not in the very near future. That's great. Great job. Um, great. Um, Melissa, I had a question about the summer meetings. Um, is that is that June, July, August, or July, August, September? For the summer schedule? Yes. Typically, um, I mean, it's completely up to the board, but in years past, we've always done abbreviated schedule, I believe, just July and August. Oh, just July and August. Okay. But something so, uh, up to the board to, to make a decision on. So we, have we don't to have to make a decision yet. Next month would be soon enough, wouldn't it? Yeah, our, our next meeting will be June 7th. Okay. okay. If we can uh, use a little time on the 7th to talk about that. Awesome. Anything else we have? No. Mona, you've got balloons floating behind you. Yes. My daughter just graduated last week from ASU with a business law degree. So we're, he we're heading toward law school, hopefully. Awesome. <laughs> Studying for the LSAT. Well, congratulate her for us, for sure. Congratulations. She got, she got a job right here in Phoenix at a law firm with one of her teachers. Um, like he's a partner in that law firm. Supposedly, it's his law firm. So, <laughs> so she's going to be trained. Yeah, she's taking a gap year in training and studying for the LSAT. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see how it right. goes. Like, she's flying everywhere. Awesome. Congrats. Congratulations Thank you. to you, too. Thank you. Yeah, she's pretty excited. Great. So the next yeah. meeting is June 7th, we said, correct? Correct. Perfect. All right. Then we will take a motion, unless there's anything else we have. No. We'll make a motion to adjourn and we'll vote on. Carol? Aye. Uh, Stefan? Aye. Ona? Aye. Aye also. So the meeting is closed and adjourned. Thank you all so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.